All right. So let's talk about um, this idea of accumulated emotion uh, as an X factor, um, because uh, if you don't understand that it is what's happening at certain moments, you're going to really misinterpret why you're failing right, and why you're struggling. And so I'm going to go through a list of some of these X factors that are, are very kind of common examples uh, that, you know, kind of make the mental hand history, the mapping process more difficult. Um, and so it just, you need to kind of know that these things are here so that when you're uh, going through those processes, you have a full picture of what's going on and you understand what is really causing your emotions, causing your reactions to be so disproportionate to what you feel is reasonable. Because right? if you don't, then you're not going to be able to devise uh, a proper strategy. All right. So I'm just going to give you a kind of a handful of uh, the ones that are most common and Looking at our time, it's clear we're going we're gonna to go over. I just say, I, I can't, there's just too much. So, all right, uh, past losses. Uh, I can't tell you the number of clients who in their new client questionnaire talk about how they've lost 50K, 100K, 600K, right? And they feel like they're in this deep hole and can't get out of it, right? Even though they're profitable now, even though they've developed a winning strategy now, there's this extra level of pressure and burden and they feel like they've got to just get out of that hole and they can't get out of it fast enough. So they oftentimes are kind of derailing their progress because you know several winning days, winning weeks still doesn't feel good enough because they're still deep in the hole. They feel like they're behind. They're trying to make up for it quickly. Okay. And so one kind of change that you can do here, uh, you know, call it like a, a, a kind of step four correction would be just changing your perspective on what those losses actually mean to you. So you could look at it as like the research and development for your trading operation, right? Those losses came, but they eventually woke you up, right? If you're here, you're doing the work. That means that those losses were valuable because whatever perspective you had when you came into trading was clearly off, right? And you dug yourself a deep enough hole because you were not aware of perhaps the psychological impact that it could have on your results, or you weren't even aware that you needed to be, needed to have any skills in this game to be successful. So research and development, Right. And then you become kind of like this company that's trying to recoup that investment. Well, what, how is a company going to do that correctly? They're not going to just try to just spray the market, right? <laughs> just hoping to make their money back. They're, they're going to have, you know, uh, go through stages, right? Proof of concept, proof of market, uh, and then ultimately get that thing to market. Um, so going through those different phases, you can just reorient yourself in your process differently. All right. Uh, dealing with uh, us, actually. So here's just kind of one uh, mental hand history that that uh, speaks to this. OK, um, so uh, describe the problem. I want to make money quickly. Explain why that makes logical sense. In the last 12 years of my intermittent trading and investing, I've lost significant amount of time and money. I could have paid my mortgage. Instead, I need and deserve to recoup all of that. And everything I've done in my life, be it studies, work, exercise, there is clear correlation between effort and reward. I've put in enough effort, so I need my returns and rewards. That's the law of life. Effort equals rewards. Anything else is not fair. So anything from that point below is not really getting to the likely accumulated emotion that is around those past losses uh, that need to be addressed, right? And so you might actually need to do a mental hand history on just whatever emotion you have related to those past losses and look at it as a I'm still holding on to these losses because blank, and that becomes step one of your mental hand history. Right? And the same thing can be, can be said for past mistakes, right? Past mistakes that you can't forgive yourself for. Um, I have a client who had 3 million Dogecoins back, I want to say it was like, uh, you know, late 2019, um, and uh, sold them for a small, but not very sizable profit. Um, and this was a very, very painful thing uh, for this client to work through, uh, as you can imagine. And it took several sessions for us to dig it out. But as it turned out, at the heart of it was a confidence issue, a confidence issue that was very small in the rest of his life, but was clear once we actually started to look more closely at it. So basically what you can do in, in, in the mental hand history and go through the a very similar process that I did with, with this client right? Describe the mistake and kind of what you're holding on to, right? And then write out why you can't forgive yourself. 
right? And so in that process, we were able to tease out, right, that there was something within his confidence. And so he was kind of looking for this big win, which I think would have been around, um, you know, almost like a $2 million position after maybe a $10,000, $20,000 investment, um, you know, life-changing money, especially for where he lived. Uh, and yeah, there was, there was a part of him that was seeking a massive windfall to kind of correct the weakness that he had in his confidence. Um, and so it was unforgivable because he kind of failed himself. He felt like he failed when in reality, right, he already felt like a failure before he even uh, took the first position. So, I mean, that that's going deep. I'm not suggesting that all of you have to go that deep in terms of what's causing you to hold on to your past mistakes, but that's just an example of what you might find. Um, external pressure, right? Some of you are experiencing financial stress, right? There's just money is tight, or as we've said, the external pressure coming from trading somebody else's money, uh, the pressure coming from needing to prove that this has not been a colossal waste of time or uh, not wanting to prove the doubters right for whomever might be questioning uh, the viability of trading as an enterprise for, for you. So that external stress can be, a, again, an X factor in terms of what uh, significantly increases the amount of emotion you're experiencing. It has to be accounted for. Uh, strong desire to avoid failing and not wanting to make it. Uh, sorry, starting to design to fail, wanting to make it and not go back to a real job. Um, now, there are several clients that I have, both from the professional golf world, the professional poker world, and from trading, for whom they actually needed to take these steps back. And I say that because at some point, they were, their weaknesses were going to get exposed, whether they would be technical or, or mental. Right? And so all of them really suffered when they had to go back and get other jobs or the trader I mentioned was an institutional one and he had to go got kind of taken off of the desk and was put in the risk department. It was like kind of the worst outcome he could have imagined. But thankfully we were able to have a conversation where not just him, but all of them were able to kind of redefine their perspective on what that step back actually meant. Okay. And when they, they got to see that it was inevitable that it was going to happen and it would have been way worse were it to happen, you know, kind of at the height of their career, it was actually better that it happened now. Right. And they start to look more pragmatically at, at what their weaknesses actually were. Right? What, what were some of the things that were eventually going to hold them back? And then in a, an environment that it was a lot kind of less intense, they were able to work on their weaknesses and get better at them. And then all of them were able to actually uh, progress back up. And uh, I don't know all, where all of them are now, but um, at least reached levels that would be defined as success. Right. Was it the ultimate success? I'm not really sure. Uh, but I'm saying all this because Sometimes the intense desire to avoid failing can be reconciled with the idea that if you actually were to fail, it actually wouldn't be as bad as you think. And the failure can be great lessons and teachers. And we all kind of heard stories like that. But the pragmatic part of it is that the failure happened for a predictable reason. And if you can understand what that was, then you can actually strengthen either elements of yourself technically or mentally, and then give yourself an opportunity to climb back up. Uh, the last one I'll mention is recent results. Um, you know, very oftentimes having your best month ever, your best year ever, or significantly negative results uh, can do the exact same thing, right? Where you, um, you know, there's a lot of emotion to back up a great year, back up a great month. Uh, and, you know, very often that comes as a uh, uh, consequence of not having your, your confidence be strong enough, right? You want your confidence to be strong enough to support what you've achieved kind of at the top uh, and, and envision it kind of like a pyramid. Right? Some of you have climbed so high and achieved so much that it actually feels like the pyramid's inverted and it's so unstable that you feel like you're just going to kind of teeter over and can't back up. And so you feel like you're kind of sabotaging those situations, right? Again, I know you know, you know how I feel about the word sabotage. It's not sabotage. It's that your confidence is not strong enough to support the idea that you could be that good. And maybe you're not. Maybe you actually had a lot of luck. And so you're not trying to back up that great month. You're trying to back up, you know, great execution. Like that's where the changes can come. But again, I think Framing it that way is uh, some uh, something related to confidence and can help you to understand maybe where that uh, accumulated emotion is coming. Mm -hmm.